My next guest has a very unique perspective as a medical doctor and a former Special Forces flight surgeon. As vaccine mandates continue to go into effect throughout the country and the private sector, now men and women in uniform are going to have to get the shots as well. Not everyone's real happy about it. I want you to welcome to the show Dr. and former Army Lieutenant Colonel Omar Amada. Dr. Amada, good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. You've got a pretty unique perspective as both a medical doctor, but also somebody who was a flight surgeon with special forces. You were in Afghanistan. As you watched our exit, what was your thoughts from having been there? And were you able to say, job well done? Not at all, sir. My first feeling really was rage and anger and disbelief that we would actually do something like that. Uh, that we would, uh, that first, that our military leadership would actually bless off something like that, that kind of strategy. Hmm. And then that this administration would do something so reckless. Today, we found out that uh, it wasn't an ISIS-K car that was destroyed by the drone August the 29th. It was a group of civilians, including seven children. It, it really disappointed me that when the military announced that this uh, horrific thing had happened and a huge mistake, killing children and totally innocent people. They didn't say, we're sorry. They didn't say, we failed. They said, the mission was not uh, as successful as we wanted it to be. I'm thinking it was much worse than that. It definitely was. And you know, Governor, it really goes to show their regard for life, especially for the lives of children. And we see that with their whole uh, policy toward and, and feeling towards abortion and the lives of the unborn. Um, I have friends who were on the ground uh, right there, and, and we knew. I mean, we knew right after the hit that it wasn't uh, the target that they actually were saying it was. And I think that's exactly the reason that they refused to name the target afterwards. If you remember during press conferences, they wouldn't even tell you who, they wouldn't tell us who was yeah. killed. Uh, you're an OBGYN specialist. That's your specialty, so you deliver babies and deal with pregnant women. Uh, big controversy, should pregnant women get the COVID vaccine? And what is your advice to your patients and, and are there risks that they should be worried about? This has been so politicized and it's really a difficult conversation. Um, the American College of OBGYN of course recommends it as do most other medical organizations, but there's a lot of fear in the general population, justifiably so. Uh, today, actually, the FDA panel, I think it was a vast majority, 2 to 16 or yeah. something like that, uh, said that we should not give boosters to people older than 16 uh, and younger than 65 because of serious safety and efficacy concerns. Well, if there are serious safety and effic efficacy concerns to the general population, I think those are multiplied when it comes to pregnant women. So we have to weigh the risks of coronavirus versus the risks of vaccination that we just don't know when it comes to the unborn. Generally, I'm assuming that most people probably are okay to take the vaccine and, and it's maybe gonna prevent them from having a severe case or having to go to the hospital, being on a ventilator, or, or, or dying. I mean, there's, right. those numbers are there. But what are the parameters that you would recommend for people? You know, it's changed. Um, early on, I was very cautious because we, we just don't know. We don't have the data. Yeah. Um, we're being told that we need to say it's completely safe and completely, um, you know, efficient, but we just don't really know completely. So with the Delta variant, I've become a lot more aggressive in terms of recommending it. Before, I was very cautious. But now as we've seen how aggressive the Delta variant is, um, the risks are great. So I think the, the risks of the vaccine are much less. You know, no one wants to see COVID continue. My goodness, we're sick of it. We want to get back to life uh, with normality. And I think for many of us, you know, taking the vaccine helps us to get there quicker. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, it's not that they have trouble with a vaccine. They have trouble with the government saying, you will take it or else. And that doesn't even allow for the people who have had COVID who have natural antibodies. Exactly. Aren't they better protected than people like me that have had a vaccine but Certainly. never got COVID? Certainly. You know, 25, the Israeli studies and other studies show that it's up to 25, uh, 25 times greater immunity with natural immunity than it is with immunized. Plus, what we're seeing is they are forcing drugs like remdesivir that has significant safety concerns and maybe isn't even worthwhile to use at all against drugs that we know work 
including hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin. Yeah. That's very controversial now. Yeah. And it's, it's almost sad that they've talked about ivermectin being a horse medicine. Mm -hmm. There's certainly a version of it, but it, was, it won a Nobel Prize in, for human <laughs> beings sure in did. 1995. So th yeah. th this nonsense that it's only for horses, my goodness, horses also get penicillin, but we don't quit giving it to people. Exactly, and, and exactly. And it's true, it's true. Well, we'd love to have you come on a regular basis. I'd and love we're to. so grateful to have you here. Thank so you. many talents, people don't know. He sings, he preaches, he is a medical doctor and a lieutenant colonel in the special forces. I'm not sure what he can't do. I don't play golf. To have it. You don't, I don't, I don't either. <laughs> we have that in common. Every Thank time you. that mouth, the, you know, the alligator's mouth opens, I just can't get it in. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. Omar Hamada, thank you so much. By the way, uh, if you'd like to know more about Dr. Hamada, you can go to find him on Twitter at Omar Hamada.